The peace of the Lord be with you, and good day. This is our devotion for Monday, February 15th. And um, I might not, you know, might not quite get this out before 3, but um, you know, we've got the noontime daily prayer in, um, in the orders on, in, in the hymnal, and, um, and I haven't done the new one in a while. So uh, let, let's go ahead and we'll do the noon one. Uh, you know, it kind of fits for that time when Christ is on the cross, so noon to 3. And, um, and so we'll, we'll follow that order. Uh, we'll be looking at the gospel lesson for this Sunday. You know, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, so this Sunday is the first Sunday in Lent. And the gospel lesson for the first Sunday in Lent is that temptation of Jesus when he's in the wilderness for 40 days fasting. So, um, so we'll read that, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, and uh, we'll begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, said to him, again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the took, devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, as you were tempted by the devil in the wilderness, you were faithful, and we give you thanks for your faithfulness. We thank you that you were faithful where we were not faithful, that you did not fall short where we do fall short. And um, as you resisted that temptation, we thank you for your example in seeing how we also may resist temptation by faith, and by trust in the word of our God. And we give you thanks all the more for your fulfillment of the law on our behalf, that you have kept that law perfectly, that you have never sinned, that you have lived the perfect life and died the death that we deserve, that we would have the joy of eternal life in your life, your death, and in your resurrection. And as we are tempted daily, we pray that you would be with us, that you would guide us in that temptation, and that you would guard and protect us from all harm and danger, as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, um, so looking at the, the lesson, so Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, you know, this is, um, you know, you see part of his, uh, part of his ministry. This is just before this, he had been, he has been baptized. And, um, you know, that's going to gonna come into play here in, in just a minute. We're going to see an interesting connection between, between that baptism and, and uh, what's coming. But, um, you know, here's that, uh, that anointing of, of Jesus in, in baptism into his ministry, right? He's, he's, uh, he's, he's anointed to, to do that work of the Messiah. Now, that's not to say that he wasn't always the Messiah. It's not to say that he wasn't always the Christ, the anointed one of God by, by his nature, by, by birth, right? Uh, he, he certainly was, but in, the, in his baptism, you see him entering into that, that public sphere of the ministry, right? So he's, 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 uh, he does that, and the first thing he does is he goes into the wilderness. Now, you can make uh, also an interesting connection between, uh, between Israel and, and their uh, sojourn in the wilderness, right? There was 40 years that they were in the wilderness, Jesus being in the, in, in the uh, wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. You know, I read some things that say, well, don't make too much of that. Um, but, you know, I think, I think 40 is 40, and you can't help but make some kind of parallel. And I think the parallel, what we really need to see, is that Christ is the faithful Israel, right? He is the faithful uh, chosen one of God. He is the one who is faithful, especially 
you know, we should see he is faithful when we are not, right? And that's the, the real joy, as I, as I mentioned during the prayer. So, uh, anyway, so after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Uh, you know, he, he's out there 40 days, 40 nights. Um, he's fasting. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you can see why we have this as the lesson for the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, you know, the, the practice, the discipline of fasting being a, uh, a common discipline in Lent. You know, a lot of times people speak of giving things up for Lent. You know, I myself do that. Um, and and we, we kind of associate that with Roman Catholicism, but um, but but it's not. I mean, uh, Jesus says in, in Matthew six, when you fast, right? So, and, I, and I, I've preached on that before, so I don't want to uh, harp too much on that. But just just a, a, a connection that as we do the things that we do in Lent, as we have the uh, the disciplines that we kind of refocus on in Lent, as we um, as we think do things like fast in Lent, that is is uh, is good for us to to understand that we can do those freely. You know, this isn't something that we're bound to. That's the, you know, that's some of the issue that you have with, with some of it in, in Roman Catholicism is there are things that become law that, that God has not commanded. But um, but the realization that some of these things are, are very beneficial to us. You know, fasting is, is a beneficial thing. It reminds us of, of our createdness, that we, we, that we rely upon the God who, who fills our bellies, you know, that, um, that, that, that our, our true Lord isn't food itself, uh, it's not the created thing, but it's the one who, who, who gives us that food and gives us not just the life in this world, but eternal life in his son Jesus, the one who provides us with all things. So, uh, so that's, a, that's a good thing. And, um, and Jesus himself fasted and, and was hungry. And, and so think about how this first temptation then would be that much more difficult when he hasn't eaten anything in, in 40 days, right? So then the, the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Like I said, you know, here, here's that, that temptation. Uh, you haven't eaten in 40 days. Make yourself some food. Now, uh, I said we were going to make a parallel connection back to the baptism, and that's, this is where that comes in. Uh, think about what, what happened in Jesus' baptism. You know, he came to John the Baptist. Uh, he was, he, uh, in, in Matthew here it says, you know, um, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, and John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. And Jesus answered him, let it be so, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh, then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove coming to rest on him, and behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Right, if you are that son, prove it. Right, that's what the devil's saying. Prove you are that son. But is that how Jesus proves he is that son? You know, sure, as that son, he has the the, the whole uh, authority of heaven and earth. He has the power of heaven and earth. He has all the power to to convert the these stones into bread. All he has to do is speak the word, and it will be done. And yet. Is that how he will prove that he is the Son? No, he will prove that he is the Son by carrying all of our sin to the cross, dying for it, being buried, and being raised again, that we would have eternal life in him. All right? So Jesus knows this. He knows that this identity that he has, that the devil is attacking, doesn't come from uh, you know, fulfilling the wants of, of the evil one. And just as we should realize that we don't have to prove our identity as Christians by fulfilling the wants of the world, I know we hear that word, and that's what he turns to. He turns to that word. He says, no, he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. What a great example for us when we are tempted that we would turn to that word. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's easy when we're tempted to just home in on that temptation, but... Um, but as we have that word, clinging, and clinging to that word is, is, is really the, the, the source of um, strength that we have. So, uh, because we don't live by bread alone, right? We live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Uh, verse 5, Then the devil took him to the holy city, that's, you know, that's Jerusalem, and uh, on, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. So there he is, you know, in the, the temple in Jerusalem. He's on the, the peak of that, very high at the building at that point. You know, Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't survive the fall if he did jump down. But attacking that identity again, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. 
And, you know, here, so now it was before, um, prove your identity by providing this food for yourself that you, that you so desperately uh, want and, and, and even, you know, in a sense need. Although Jesus proves it. Well, he didn't, he didn't actually need it, right? Um, but now prove, prove that you are that son by showing uh, the, the care and attention that God will, will give to you, right? That his angels will not... Yeah, you know, will be con sure. will be commanded concerning you that on their hands they'll bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And what does Jesus do again? Again, he turns to the word. Again, it is written, "You shall not put the Lord your God to the test." Verse eight. Again, the devil put him, took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, "All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me." So this time he doesn't attack that identity as God's son, right? But he just puts this authority uh, and this power before him and and of course you know that's something the devil could do because he had that authority from from the dominion having been given to adam which adam um transferred over the devil via sin right and uh, and so he says all these i will give you if you'll fall down and worship me but then jesus says said to him be gone satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve you know clinging to uh to what is right and and uh clinging to the goodness of his heavenly father and serving him alone. And, uh, and so then the devil left him. You know, be gone, and the devil left him. And behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Uh, you know, and what a, what a comfort we have that, uh, that the angels are ministering spirits that, that come and help us too. That as um, by virtue of, of this Christ who is faithful in temptation, uh, by virtue of his life, his death, and his resurrection, his sacrifice for our sins, uh, we have we have life in him and, uh, and and he even commands his angels concerning us now that they would care for us not that we wouldn't strike our foot against a stone you know we certainly we have things that are hard, uh, that hurt us physically and are challenging and we have uh, hardships in this life but um, but even still he he cares for us with the greatest of, of, uh, of fulfilling the greatest of our needs and forgiving our sins and even commanding his angels concerning us to watch over us and care for us, to guard and protect us. All right, thanks be to God. Amen. All right, uh, we continue on uh, on page 296 with the, uh, the carrier there. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.